The audience, my PhD topic is the prostodontic application of intraoral scanning systems, which are very novel devices used in dentistry for impression taking. My name is Victoria Vitai, and I work as a dentist at the Department of Prostodontics, and my vision is high-end digital dentistry, digital prostodontics available for all patients. My, wish, my mission is intraoral scanning systems to the everyday prostodontic workflow. In my two meta-analyses, I want to investigate the accuracy and the two-stage selection of intraoral scanning systems. My first meta-analysis is connected to the accuracy of intraoral scanning systems in full arch accuracy. Some of the dental restoration materials can only be manufactured by computer-aided design, computer-aided manufacturing. Uh, in this uh, technology, we always need a 3D model about the patient, and intraoral scanners are devices used for the production of these 3D files. We have uh, many uh, kinds of intraoral scanners available in the market, and they have uh, different features. They are clinically acceptable in single tooth accuracy, but we have different results according to their uh, full arch accuracy. That's why it is a very important topic to be investigated. My question is that what is the accuracy of the different intraoral scanning systems when we want to uh, scan full arch? Our hypothesis is that none of the scans made with these devices are significantly different from the reference 3D files. And in my PICO, I used su four subgroups for the, uh, for the population part and about 13 uh, index text. In my systematic search, I uh, searched in five databases, and for the query, I used uh, the population and the intervention part for the questions. In my flowchart, you can see that uh, finally I selected 120 articles eligible for the subgroup analysis. My meta-analysis is not an ordinary meta-analysis, it is a network meta-analysis. It is a technique to compare three or more interventions in a single analysis uh, simultaneously with the help of a network of studies. We can uh, combine the direct and the indirect evidence in this network, and we can make a ranking hierarchy of interventions. In my case, I have the reference scanner uh, where we can uh, combine the interventions directly and indirectly in the network. We can categorize uh, iOS uh, according to their release in the time. For example, the first generations of intraoral scanning systems were introduced from 2008, and we have a second generation starting from 2012, and the new generation of scanners were introduced about 2018. In the subgroups, I mentioned that uh, I used four subgroups, uh, and today I am only talk about the edentulous arch uh, because we have many data, but also we have the implant models, the dentated models, and the mixed models in the subgroup analysis. In this network plot, you can see the 13 interventions, the 13 intraoral scanners used in my network, and here, the, uh, the bigger the dots are of the interventions and the bigger the lines are between uh, the interventions, the more uh, studies are uh, mentioning them. Uh, so, for example, in the case of three shape trios, it was mentioned a lot in the articles. Uh, the leak heat plot uh, can make, uh, make it possible to compare uh, interventions for example, if you can see the rows and the columns, we can see the interventions, the intraoral scanners, uh, in order by their ranking and the hierarchy. Uh, the heat plot uh, also has a color uh, map. Uh, in, in this case, the brighter the color is, the closer the data is to the reference uh, control. Let, let me show you uh, this uh, left upper corner of this uh, uh, plot, where we can find the data closest to the reference. If we want to compare, for example, three ship trios, three intraoral scanner to the reference, we will see that it is about 80 uh, micrometers uh, difference. Uh, the difference is about 80 micrometers from the control, and uh, you can see the 95% uh, uh, of uh, confidence interval within the round bracket. And it is a significant uh, difference because uh, uh, the table shows the asterisks in this case. 
but we can compare not to the not just to the uh, control but also two different intraoral scanners for example if i want to compare three shape to calcium scanner i will find that uh, there is no uh, significant difference between the two uh, scanners in this forest plot you can see uh, the uh, in the x axis the uh, performance of the interventions with the 95% uh, of confidence interval and the mean uh, from the reference scanner and uh, the further the interval is from the zero effect line the null effect line the worse the intraoral scan scanner's performance is we have uh, we have a group of scanners uh, where, uh, where there is no significant difference between the reference. These are mainly for, from the first generation, uh, the new generation of intraoral scanners. And we also have uh, another group of uh, scanners there, uh, which are significantly different from the reference, but they are uh, clinically, within the clinically acceptable deviation, which is 300 micrometers in this case. And there are only two scanners uh, which are not under this uh, deviation. Uh, for the bias assessment, I use a Quadras 2 uh, tool. And uh, as for the strengths, I can say that the intraoral scanners can be compared directly and indirectly. Uh, and the evidence of the practical applicability is high on in the network analysis. The limitations are that we don't really have enough data about uh, all of the intraoral scanners available in the market. And in these studies, they usually use models, gypsy models, and not real patients. As for conclusion, I can say that the new generation of intraoral scanners are clinically acceptable in the case of a dangerous full arch, and there is no significant difference between them. So you can uh, choose all of them if you, if you want to start with this uh, kind of scanning. As for implication for practice, I can say that the scanners can be used for the fully uh, edentulous arch rehabilitation, and also uh, dentists uh, should choose uh, the best intraoral scanners that fits uh, the, for their indication. For example, in this case, we don't recommend to use Serec Blue Cam, but Triospor is available for uh, the full arch edentulous scanning. As for implication for research, it is uh, very important to use standardized accuracy protocols and reporting protocols and of course the multi-arm clinical trials where they uh, compare more intraoral scanners together. My second topic is uh, connected to the two shade selection of intraoral scanning systems. This is a special tool that not all, every intraoral scanner can do. Uh, Two-shade selection is a very important topic in dentistry because in 65% uh, of the dental restorations which had to be remade is because of the bad shade selection. That's why new digital methods were introduced and one of the first uh, digital methods were the spectrophotometers which now are the gold standard for the objective measurements. Uh, and the uh, intraoral scanner devices uh, introduced uh, another solution as well. The question is that what is the accuracy of shade selection uh, with intraoral scanners and their hypothesis is that there is no significant difference between the shade selection with intraoral scanners when we compare them to spectrophotometers and in my PICO I want to use the shade selection with the intraoral scanners comparing them to spectrophotometers and we want to measure the accuracy and the repeatability part. As for implication, I can say that if they are accurate enough, then they can be a very objective, time-efficient and cost-effective devices, uh, and uh, they can make the, uh, the comprehensive case documentation for patients available. I want to finish both of my meta-analysis uh, until August, and uh, to thank you for your attention, I want to tell you my own quote, which is, life is a board game where you have to learn the rules while you are playing the game. And I invite you for the card game of the quiz. Thank you very much. Uh, I just have a comment regarding the last, uh, the, the, almost the last uh, slide you were presenting, that you are saying, and not only you, but a lot of you were saying that you will finish the meta-analysis until August. Uh, that shouldn't happen. I mean, we expect you to finish it until May. 
So next time, please say that until May you will finish it because there are deadlines you know, in the program. And uh, it, it, even in the presentation, it should be May. Okay. It's just a comment, you know. Thank you for your comment. <laughs> uh, until the audience is thinking about their own question, I would like to ask you about the edentulous scans and the printed removable dentures. So do they anyhow belong to each other in your work or in your group's work? Um, so do you print mm -hmm. removable dentures? Uh, yes, we have, uh, we have about two cases in the clinic where we printed uh, dentures and also CAT CAM tech, so the, not just the printing, but also the milling is available for uh, complete dentures. These are not very, uh, so it's not an everyday practice like to print or mill dentures, but uh, we have some uh, starting uh, cases, for example. Okay, yes. so, so no more conclusions you wanted to no. say? No, <laughs> okay. thank you. Thank you for the presentation. It was very nice. I have a question uh, about the first project of yours. Uh, do you, uh, can you tell us something about the cost effectiveness of this device? Well, intraoral scanners are not, uh, not uh, cheap uh, devices, so they, they are expensive. But uh, if you want to, um, want to use the CAD CAM technology, want to mill or, or want to print something, uh, we always need the 3D file, and uh, and uh, maybe it is uh, better to use them in the long run if they are accurate enough. So that's why it was very important to uh, should we buy an expensive device and uh, uh, will we get it back uh, because it is uh, so useful. So uh, we, I, I don't uh, search uh, about the cost effectiveness of these devices, but. Yes, in the long run, maybe they, they can be cost effective. And uh, is there any price uh, difference between older and new ones? Uh, the, there is a difference between them, of course. Uh, but I don't say that, for example, the older ones are cheaper or the older ones are uh, more expensive because uh, they change uh, according to their manufacturers and uh, maybe if I want to buy like a first generation intro scanner I can buy it very cheap because they don't really want to use it now but uh, when they first in, they when they first were introduced they, then uh, maybe they were very ex expensive so maybe it makes sense to make a um, it, it, it investigation depends. yes it depends so. on the manufacturer and, and, and it depends yeah. what you want to do in your practice because yes. full arch uh, effectiveness it's uh, only the new generation is able to scan full arches the old uh, machines cannot and then the cheapest is the most expensive because you you cannot fit your dentures your your prosthetics yes exactly May I have a question? Please. So, you. Uh, you told me that uh, us that uh, there's a cutoff point of uh, 300, and now we have uh, devices that can uh, work in a closer kind of uh, differences. Do you agree with this kind of cutoff point, or would you say that it should be a bit narrowed? Uh, what was the first part of Can the question? Can we go back, back uh, to yeah. your slide of the cutoff point? Where? Yes, here. So, uh, my question is that uh, we can see now that there are some devices that uh, work significantly uh, differing way. Do you agree that uh, this is totally okay? or it can make problems? Of course it can uh, make problems, but uh, these scanners are not the most, uh, so these are not the new generations, and, uh, and later on we will have better and better devices. Okay. So yes, now it makes sense, but it is still uh, under the clinically acceptable range. Mm 